Hello grade 11s and grade 12s, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be covering a Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation exam question. This is for grade 11 and 12 physics learners. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I do physics, I do maths, chemistry, and I do lots of past paper questions like this one. Check out the links below for more videos. If you want more Newton's Laws questions, including Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, but also one, two, and three, I do have a study guide that you can get. You can buy it from my website. I'll link it down below. It's 150 pages. It has over 50 examples. So I hope it's really useful. I think it's really useful. Um, and hopefully it helps you as well if you decide to get it. But otherwise, let's jump right in to this video. Here is the question, and we will be answering all of these sub-questions in this video. Right, let's get right into the video. We've got Earth, and they say a satellite of mass 1,000 kilograms, so we've got the mass of the satellite, is orbiting the Earth at a distance of 1,200 kilometers from the Earth's surface. So here's the surface of the Earth. So from the surface of the Earth to the center of the satellite, that is 1,200 kilometers. What is nice about this question is that they've actually converted it to meters already for you. So you should know that to go from kilometers to meters, you times by a thousand. So that would essentially be one, two, zero, 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 zero meters, which if you convert to scientific notation ends up being this number. It's very important in the context of Newton's law of universal gravitation to convert distances to meters. We also know that our second body is the earth. Now, if you look on your formula sheets, so if you look at your formula sheet, this comes from the exam guidelines. So these are the official formulas that you should receive at the end of your grade 12 year for your final paper. And most schools will use the same formula sheet for grade 11 as well and grade 12 throughout the year. So these are the formulas that we will be using for Newton's law of universal gravitation. These are the formulas. Now, please just take note. This is very important because people get confused. These two are the same thing. Except some people use D, some people use R. Same thing here. These two are the same thing, but some people use D, some people use R. And this is to calculate weight, okay, or force of gravity acting on an object. But the point that I wanted to make is if you look at the physical constants, which is this table behind me, which you also get in your paper, you will notice the following. Okay, you get acceleration due to gravity. So that is acceleration due to gravity that we feel on Earth, 9.8 meters per second per second downwards. Universal gravitational constant is big G. That is the constant in the formulas. So there's big G, there's big G, big G, big G. But on this sheet, this physical constants table, you also get the mass of the Earth. They gave it to you over there and the radius of the Earth, they give it to you over here. That means that in this question, we don't only know the mass of the one object, the mass of the satellite, that's a thousand kilograms they gave it to us, we actually also know the mass of the large object, which is the mass of the Earth, which is this value over here, 5,98 times 10 to the power of 24. We know that as well, that's very, very important. Let's see what kind of questions they want us to answer. How does the force which the Earth exerts on the satellite compare with the force that the satellite exerts on the Earth. Now, immediately you should know that the force that the Earth exerts on the satellite is the same, is equal to the force that the satellite exerts on the Earth, equal to. And this is because of Newton's third law of motion, which states when object A, so the Earth, exerts a force on object B, so the satellite, the satellite simultaneously exerts an oppositely directed force of equal magnitude on object A. So if the Earth exerts 3,000 newtons on the satellite, the satellite's going to exert 3,000 newtons on the Earth because of Newton's third law. What I think that this question should have included is the word magnitude. So how does the magnitude of the force which the Earth exerts in the satellite compares with the magnitude of the force. Because although the magnitude, so the size, is equal to, the direction is actually opposite. But anyway, that's basically what they wanted you to figure out in this question. So your answer is equal to, and when they say state the relevant physics law, we don't only want you to give the name, we actually want you to state the law. So if you look down below, they are stating Newton's third law of motion in their answer. 6.2 wants us to state Newton's law of universal gravitation in words. So again, another definition. 
Here's Newton's law of universal gravitation. And as a teacher who works full time, currently marking with trick papers and grade 11 papers, a, um, a mistake that my students often make is instead of saying the word inversely, they say indirectly. You have to say inversely. And you have to say this beginning part of the definition. Each body in the universe attracts every other body. And they attract each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product. You have to say product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. You have to say between their centers because this formula, basically the definition is a word version of this formula. So if you take a look at this formula, you have to say product of their masses. Can you see that we are multiplying the masses together and multiplying is product? And can you see that it's inversely proportional because it's below the fraction? So if you're dividing by anything at, at the bottom of the fraction is inversely proportional to whatever's on the side and it's the square of the distance. So you have to square the distance, you have to say square and it's between their centers because when we use this formula, and this is going to be very relevant in this question, the force that is calculated is calculated from the center of object A to the center of object B. From the center to the center, that is R in the formula. It's the distance between their centers. And I know you might think that I'm going on about irrelevant stuff, but my students sometimes learn the definition wrong, or they try and learn a shortened version of it. They leave out keywords and then they get zero out of two. Now moving on to the calculation questions, which together add up to nine marks. It's the most out of this entire question, so let's go. Our first question says, calculate the force that the Earth exerts on the satellite to keep it in orbit. Now, when you see a question like this, you're going to go to your formula sheet and you're going to decide which of these formulas make the most sense to use. As soon as you see, calculate the force, calculate the gravitational force, or even calculate the weight, then you are going to use this formula over here. Okay, they're, they're the same formula, remember? The formulas on the right, in other words, these ones, this one and this one, those we use to calculate gravitational acceleration. That's not what is being asked in this question. So we're going to use one of these formulas on the right. It doesn't matter which version you use. The version that I use looks like this. So M1, M2 over R squared. Now, what is very important to understand, and I have briefly mentioned this, is that R is the distance between the object's centers. And I know R is maybe an unfortunate variable to use in this formula because a lot of people think that R means radius. And yes, it does in maths, but in this formula, R does not mean radius. R means distance between centers. So if I have my Earth over there, let's actually draw Earth bigger because I want to show you something. If I have my Earth over there, and then I have my satellite over here. The distance between their centers is here's the distance, here's the center of Earth, here's the center of the satellite. This entire distance over here is what we call R, the R in this formula, this R. Okay, so this R is this entire distance over here. But I hope that the following makes sense to you. The distance that we were given on the diagram in our question. So let me make myself smaller. I'll show you what I mean. This distance over here, 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6, or it was given in the actual written part of the question as, I can't remember exactly, um, 1,200 kilometers here, which is the same as 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6. That distance is not R. Take a look carefully at what that distance is. That distance goes from the middle of the satellite to the surface of the earth. So take a look at what I mean. I'm going to use different colors to show you. This distance over here, let's make it green. This distance over here goes from the center of the satellite to the surface of the earth. That is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6 meters. But the R that I need to use in this formula is this entire yellow distance. So we've just got the green part of it. We've just got part of it. How do I find the entire yellow distance then? Well, it's including this green piece, but it also needs to include this piece over here. So let me use my pen to show you. This piece over here. What is this distance over here? 
from the center of earth to the outer cord to the outer um, circumference what is that distance called this is called the radius of earth so basically what i'm trying to say is that r in the formula r in this formula is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6 meters plus the radius of earth i hope that makes sense radius of earth now where do i find the radius of earth how do i know what that is remember they give it to me on the formula sheet here it is at the bottom okay 6.38 times 10 to the power of 6 so basically we've got 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6 plus this number over here 6.38 6.38 times 10 to the power of 6 together those distances add up to the r that i need to use in this formula so let's sub into the formula. So you always write your blank formula first that gets you a mark. Then we're going to substitute in. So we're looking for force. We're looking for F. Big G is a constant. Now don't make mistakes like I do. I've been teaching for years and years and years and years. So I basically have memorized all these constants. But sometimes I'm having a bad day and I think I've memorized it and I make a mistake. So rather just double check that you have the correct constant. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. That's the constant G. So we substituted that in. Then we've got mass one. That's either the satellite or earth. It doesn't matter. Let's do the big body first. So earth 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24. Again, the mass of Earth I get from my data sheet. Then the mass of the satellite, 1,000, given in the question. And then R, remember, is those two distances added together. So I'm just going to do a big bracket here. 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6 plus the radius of Earth, which is 6,38 times 10 to the power of 6. And remember, we must square R. Look at your formula r is squared another sad thing that happens a lot with my students is they know what r is they write the formula out beautifully they substitute beautifully but then they forget this little square when they substitute and they don't square it on their calculator and then they lose i think it, well in this case it's five marks so they'll definitely lose at least two of the marks now, when you type it in on your calculator, I recommend using brackets around everything because if you don't, then your calculator could do weird things. And I end up getting that as my answer, which I have included over there. We may round off to at least two decimals. You can keep it to more decimals. So it cannot be one decimal, but it can be two or three or four or five decimals. Now, if you take a look at the question, it says calculate the force that the Earth exerts on the satellite. Now, forces are vectors, which means that actually that you need to give me a magnitude, which is the amount, the number, the number like 6942,06 with the unit, obviously, plus direction. So you have to give a direction. The only time you do not have to give a direction for a vector is when they say, calculate the magnitude of the force which would just be this but always you have to give a unit but it would just be this but because they just say force you have to give a direction now they say the force that the earth exerts on the satellite so the earth will pull the satellite towards it so your direction can be towards the earth towards the earth is a perfectly fine um, direction towards the earth or you can say an attractive force because it is an attractive force you could even say the satellite will move to the left because in the diagram the satellite will move towards the left but you have to give me a direction so where would you get your marks in a question like this i always work backwards because the answer will obviously always give you a mark answer with units and direction the formula will always give you a mark so that's one two then you'll get a mark for substituting in correctly at the top, correctly at the bottom, and you'll get another mark overall for any additional substitution, if that makes sense. So maybe um, this one will be for adding them and this one will be for substituting it in and squaring it correctly. But basically, if you don't square it, you're going to lose two marks because your answer will be wrong and you will lose the substitution mark. My next question seems completely unrelated to the Earth and the satellite situation. They give me the mass and radius of planet A. 
So there's the mass in kilograms. Here's the radius in kilometers. We're going to have to convert that to meters. Just keep reminding yourself of that. Calculate the acceleration due to gravity. We're looking for acceleration due to gravity. So immediately, if we go back to our formula sheets, it does not make sense to use these first formula over here, this, these ones. This one gets me acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is G, okay? I know it's G and you think of acceleration as being A, but G is acceleration due to gravity. So we're going to use G, let's change the color of my pen, G is equal to, baby G, is equal to big G, then M over R squared. Now, G is the constant 6.67, times 10 to the negative 11. I hope I've memorized that correctly. Yes, I have. Mass, when you're calculating acceleration due to gravity, if they give you two masses to throw you off, you always use the mass that is bigger. So say, for example, they give you an object of a person standing on the surface of Earth, and they ask you to calculate the acceleration due to gravity. Do you see that there's only space for one mass in this formula? The mass that you use is the mass of the larger body, the larger object. So in this case, they're not giving me multiple masses. We'll have to use the mass of the planet. That is what we would generally use anyway. So the mass of the planet in kilograms, 7,35 times 10 to the power of 22 must be in kilograms. That's good. Then the radius must be in meters. How do we convert from kilometers to meters? These are... Um, conversions that you just need to know. You times by a thousand or some people write it as times 10 to the power of three. It's the same thing. So we're going to go one, seven, three, seven times 1000 or times 10 to the power of three. But remember, we must square it because the formula says square. Type it in on your calculator. Now I get 1,62. Remember your unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. It's not m dot s to the power of negative one. That's the unit for speed or velocity. It has to be meters per second per second or meters per second squared. And because they didn't say calculate the magnitude of acceleration due to gravity, acceleration, acceleration due to gravity is a vector. So we need a direction. And gravity will always be towards the center of the planet. So the reason why if I drop this pen, it falls straight down is because of acceleration due to gravity, which is pulling my pen towards the center of Earth. I know it's down, but the reason it's down is because it's towards the center of the Earth. So you can say downwards if you want, but a better way to say it would be towards the center of planet A. That would be a better answer. Towards the center of planet A. Or you could say towards A, that's also perfectly fine. Now this is four marks, you would get a mark for your formula, substitution at the top, substitution at the bottom, and your answer with unit and direction. I really hope that this video was helpful. Please check out the links in the description box below for more videos like this. I also have a Newton's Law study guide that you can purchase. I'll put the, I'll put the link in the description box below. I hope you subscribe for more videos like this, and I can't wait to see you in another one in the future. Bye everyone!